when you're an academic failure like I am, you just think that success is not going to be in your future. It turns out if you, if you have something to say, then there's going to be people that want it. When my father abandoned us, he left very little behind. A few photos, a copy of his doctoral thesis on the Biafran War, and the name he had given me. Aha Mefile J. Oluo. Actually, he just, he only chose the Aha Mefile part. My mom, a white lady from Kansas, wanted me to have a simple American name so I'd fit in. So they compromised, and that's why my name is Aha Mefile Joe Oluo. <laughs> the, the biggest achievement in my artistic career is, is a show called Now I'm Fine. The core of that show is a six month period of time in my life where everything that could fall apart fell apart. I got divorced, my father died, and then you know I had this really bizarre disease where your skin dissolves. <laughs> anything that I thought about my life, anything that I thought about my future was put into question. I can't remember a time that I wasn't like trying to figure out how to make music. My father moved back to Nigeria uh, when I was one month old and then just never came back. So my mom was left with two children in a very poor environment. We didn't really have any instruments around the house. Some guy at our apartments was selling a trumpet. My mom had just gotten her income tax return and you know she pulled the trigger and I got a trumpet and I stuck with it. We met when we were 23, I think. Like he was doing storytelling, stand up, and music at the same time. And in music, it wasn't just like jazz. And sometimes it would get frustrating. Like, why can't you focus on one thing? I found my strength in that. I looked and I had all, all these things, all these musical ideas, all these joke ideas, all these story ideas. I realized, I think these, I think these are part of the same thing. When we met, he had been married, was in the middle of a divorce, had two kids, had to drop out of school to support his family. This guy didn't get to meet his father. He almost died. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. Some people don't recover from one of those things. I mean, he's not only surviving, he's thriving. That's incredible. Yeah, I'm just, I'm amazed by him. We had the first performance, you know, about 10 years ago, and the sound wasn't right, and it, the music was just way harder than I thought it was, and it was just, it was awful. Things fell apart several times. I mean, like, we couldn't even keep the wheels on it. And I spent, you know, all those months writing that music, and then, you know, we had this debut, and I was like, okay, I failed. Like, I failed this thing. Maybe I'm not really an arranger. Maybe I, maybe I can't do this. I put that music to bed after that first show. Someone in the band was like, I, I think you should give that music another chance. And I mean, to this day, I think about if I had not done that, you know, the greatest decision that I ever made artistically was to just keep pushing with that. We're at the Public Theater in New York City, one of the greatest theaters in the country. And this is where I brought my show uh, now I'm fine for the Under the Radar Festival, uh, and it was my first show in New York. I, I was so nervous that, that the things that had worked in Seattle uh, weren't going to work the same way. When that show got a, a, really, a rave review from the New York Times, I was like, this is going to be okay. To take a lifetime of negativity and to turn it into something that is not only meant so much to me, but has meant so much to, to other people, 
I mean, art's powerful. Right now, I'm in a position where I can make something new. I'm going to jump on that. But I have this show that kind of gave me my dad back in, in like a weird way. You know, it, it turned who he was in my life in, into some sort of positive. His presence all of a sudden was doing good. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.